everybody. I just wanted to say hi. I'm coming to you live, not yeah, not recorded, although I guess we are recording, but I'm live here in LA. I just want to do a shout out to everybody around the world. Where's where's the farthest anybody is right now from LA? It is looks it? like Jakarta is probably the farthest one. Uh, no, Australia. We have one from Australia here, Tony. Oh, right on. Well, hopefully you guys didn't have to get up as early as I did, but uh, that's okay. I like getting a jump on the, on the day, and especially seeing a bunch of happy, smiley faces that are believers from all over the world is uh, a unique point of view that I don't, I don't normally get here in Hollywood. So <laughs> this is great. Um, <laughs> Tony, do you mind if I introduce you and give you yeah. the proper introduction and throw it to you? Let's go for it. Yeah. Hey, you know, everyone, as you are joining on, we have individuals from the U.S. We have individuals from Nairobi, uh, Kuala Lumpur. I looked out in Australia, Singapore, Jakarta. So we have a lot of that. We actually even have one that you, a couple from Ukraine as well, too. So, hey, for those who are just jumping on, good morning in the U.S., good evening, uh, wherever you are in Asia and Af uh, in Africa. It is great. I've gotten to know Tony through a mutual friend, Phil Vischer, who founded VeggieTales. And Phil was nice enough to introduce me to Tony. And we met for the very first time a couple of years ago. And so he actually spoke for one of our events for Resource Global. And so actually, let me just take two minutes, explain to you which groups are hosting today. We are delighted. I get a chance to wear two hats. The one is with Resource Global, which is a lot of you guys know. Resource Global is a ministry organization with its core purpose of coming alongside young Christian marketplace leaders all throughout the world to really be able to look at resourcing and releasing them through biblical values, integration, faith and work, biblical justice and mercy to really be able to make a difference in the world and in their cities. And so we started out in Jakarta in Chicago. From that point on now in the last couple of years, we've moved over to Kuala Lumpur, Nairobi, Singapore, Austin. And so how do you create a global network of these young Christian marketplace leaders who are understanding how God has designed them, what their passions are, what their skills are, and how you use it to make a difference in their city. So that's one. And so welcome to all of you guys who are joining that. And so, Tony, I am so honored. Let me just share a little bit in terms of uh, Tony's formal bio. 30 years in the animation industry. He has been creatively involved in films with such as Stuart Little 2. He was uh, creating characters within The Lion King, Emperor's New Grove, Groove, Beauty and the Beast. He co-directed the animated feature Mulan, which many of you guys and my daughter watches over and over again. His newest film on Netflix is Animal Crackers. If you have not watched it and you have Netflix, download Animal Crackers because it is a phenomenal film. And now his newest film where he is the lead animator is Warner Brothers Space Jam 2, where he gets to create a world with LeBron James, a bunch of NBA actors that I forgot who's in there, but then more so, Bugs Bunny, Tweety, the Bird, Roadrunner, and El is Elmer the Flood in there here, Tony? Elmer's in there. Elmer's in the house. Yes. Oh, and so I am so excited to throw it to Tony and for him to share a little bit about his journey, his walk, and also what he's doing as well, too. In the midst of that, hopefully he'll do some drawing and illustration for you as well, too. So, Tony, I'm going to send it to you. All right. Well, thank you guys for having me uh, this bright and early morning or night or afternoon or whatever it is for you. But thank you for having me uh, here. Um, I want to I'll, I'll probably talk because I do want to get to Q&A uh, because I'm really interested to know what you guys are interested in, too. But thank you, Tommy, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I thought he was going to start preaching. You know, that was that would be good. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm going to share a, a screen with you. I have a little PowerPoint that kind of will go over my career and how God has really worked through my life at first unknowing to me as a young Christian thinking it was all about me and then realizing that God had a bigger plan and really put me on a path uh, for a purpose and I and I, that's what I love and that's kind of the theme of the of the talk today so I'm, I'm going to take uh, over uh, the screen share here so uh, <laughs> one guy's journey on how to do it 
Uh, and, and really that's kind of a pun because I really think that there are so many ways that people get into animation, but this is kind of for me and my twin brother, Tom, I'm going to talk about him a little bit too. I can't talk about my journey without talking about him a little bit, but I, we both started out as just young geeky twins. That's me on the left there. Um, just learning to draw in. My mom had just made these wonderful Star Wars curtains for us. We were so proud and to display that in this picture. And then uh, as I got matured as an artist, I went to uh, CalArts, California Institute of the Arts. That's me on the right in my little animation desk, learning animation. Yeah, I was skinny. Can you believe it? See, we all have humble origins. I had hair and I was skinny. That was, that was the good days. Uh, where is my next slide? I might have to use a different, okay, there we go. Uh, more CalArts pictures. Um, <clears throat> I like this, this top one, because this shows me with the, some of my classmates and all these guys, this is my twin brother. He's down here too. Um, it, if you can see him here, and that's, that's Tom. But over here is Pete Doctor, who went on to be a famous Pixar director, and actually he runs, the, he's the chief creative officer now over at Pixar. He was in my class too, but those were good days. I'd say cartoons and sin abounds because CalArts was for a young Christian boy, um, you know, not the best in the way of Christian foundations because uh, they had, you know, nude sunbathing at the pool where even the faculty, even your teachers would go down to the pool and swim naked. So it was a different, different uh, kind of college experience. But we, you know, we were the nerdy kids in the character animation program at CalArts um, and really untouched from a lot of the wild parties and drugs and things like that that was going on at, it's an art college, so you can imagine um, everything that was going on. But Tom and I were already in a foundation of, um, uh, we were Christians, we were, grew up that way, went to a, you know, a Southern Baptist church, so we had these very, you know, kind of staunch fundamental background. So we, we kind of skimmed through CalArts just playing and drawing and you know, thinking about cartoons all the time and really kind of missed everything that was going out, going on around us. And CalArts led to uh, me getting into an internship. That's me kind of graduating from an internship at Disney. My brother did too. But my brother went to the Disney MGM Florida studios. I stayed in, in Burbank largely. And uh, this is a picture of me working on The Lion King. This is the storyboards behind us as we're doing that. And as a young animator, I, I really, uh, you know, a God had given me kind of an opportunity to uh, work with a mentor who was really good with comedy characters. So largely my first uh, films that I worked on, which was all in the 90s. I, did, I worked on your childhood. That's true. Um, <laughs> I did all those films in the 90s. Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, um, you know, Rescuers Down Under, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I worked on that a little bit. Um, Mulan, as as Tommy mentioned, and then later Emperor's New Group. But I worked on Cogs. Specifically, we were cast on characters back then, kind of like a live action actor is cast on a on a movie. So I did Cogsworth the Clock and Beauty and the Beast. I did Yago the Parrot in Yag uh, in Aladdin. Um, and then I moved into supervising animator at the young age of 24. I was one of the youngest supervising animators on The Lion King, the original one, not that weird digital one where they look glassy eyed. Um, this was the original Lion King. And that's me at 24 working on Pumbaa the Warthog, who was my assignment on that film. So I did almost all the shots of Pumbaa the Warthog on the film The Lion King. Those are some of my drawings. I, even, I still have this maquette. It's behind me on the shelf. You'll probably see it later. Oh, and um, so I, I did go on to Mulan, but I'm going to come back to that because that was a real life changer for me and my career. But um, after, after Mulan, I really got the itching to draw again and wanted to animate. So I, I went on to Emperor's New Groove, which was this crazy comedy. And, and having been kind of a comedy guy, um, I could not resist Kronk, uh, the character Kronk, who I worked on. I got the shirt on today. Um, squeak, squeaking, squeak, squeaker. If you've heard that, I didn't write it, but I animated it. Um, so loved working on Kronk. There's my daughter's little drawing right here, too. She was an inspiration on this. 
she did the first model for Kron. No, not really. <laughs> So Mulan, oh my goodness. So uh, I, I came into, God opened up a, a floodgate of opportunities for me in my early years at Disney. And I could not figure out why, why me? Um, so when I came on to Mulan, I was, uh, I think I say 28 here. I think it was actually 27. Um, and uh, youngest director in Disney history, probably. And at that time, it, it was really a journey for an animator to become a director. It could, and Disney was very staunch about, you know, um, putting in the time. But for me, I, I came into Disney within five years, I was directing, whereas most people, five years to become an animator, 10 years to become a supervising animator, which is what I did on Pumbaa, and then 15 to 20 years to become a director. Um, so it was kind of an unusual thing and a lot of pressure. And I discovered a lot of things at that time. When I, when I rose kind of early uh, in my career, I realized that there was a lot I just didn't know. And I got thrown into the big pond um, without an oar or a paddle, I guess it is, um, in, in a big way. And this is where it was probably one of the hardest times in my life with my marriage and with family. I had young babies being born at that time and working long hours. Um, I put this picture in here. This is myself and my co-director, Barry Cook. But I put this picture in here because this was my, my mentor when I first started at Disney. And now five years later, I was his boss as director of the film. But I worked underneath him as a, a lowly cleanup assistant and then came back to Florida studio because I started there, went to California, rose up in the ranks and went back to Florida studio. And now I was everybody's boss, including my brother, twin brother, Tom. Here he is in this picture with us, giving him a scene of Mushu. I made him uh, supervise an animator of Mushu the dragon. Um, but it, this is where I went through a lot of trials and I learned that, you know, you're not given uh, authority and respect doesn't come to you just because of a title. And it's really, it, you have to earn it in, in your crew's eyes. You have to earn that respect of the title. So um, what I really learned was from Jesus's example, of course, is that to serve my crew um, and give them what they needed to do their job well is how I was really successful and earn their respect, not by micromanaging or telling them what to do and how to do it, but giving them the latitude because they had the skill sets. I'd, you know, Disney had hired the right people to do their jobs well. I just needed to help them to understand what I wanted out of the film and therefore out of their performance. And then we all wanted the same thing, which was to make a great movie. So we had, we were aligned in our goals and I just needed to be able to learn how to serve them so that they could do what they did well. Uh, so, but it was such a learning curve for me. I learned so much about it and I realized that there's no training program for directing animation. I was just thrown into it and had to learn all this stuff as I was making a multi-million dollar over a hundred million dollar feature. So I uh, wrote a book uh, a couple of years later, I put it all, all the things that I learned together and came out with directing for animation, which came out a while ago, uh, but it's still available on amazon.com. Um, and I have interviews too. I didn't want it to just to be about what I learned. So I have anecdotes, stories and interviews with a bunch of other leading directors in the animation industry. And it's become really kind of the the number one and one of the few if not only um uh, titles on directing and animation which is kind of an unknown art in itself so i felt called though um you know i one of my things is that when i was a, a young uh, boy in the baptist church the pastor used to always say one day you may be called by god you may be called by god right where you're sitting to go into the mission field. And <laughs> when I was a kid wanting to be a cartoonist, like my idol, Charles Schultz, who drew the peanuts or, or Chuck Jones, who created the Warner brothers characters and stuff. I was terrified by that. Cause I thought, what am I going to do in Uganda or South Africa or Asia um, for drawing cartoons? You know, how's God going to use that? What I didn't realize is that 
I could serve God in so many different ways, but within the entertainment industry, particularly, there was a need. And in animation, there was a need. And so I left Disney and I went to transition from leaving Disney. I went to Sony Image Works um, <clears throat> for a short time and worked on as the animation supervisor on Stuart Little 2. This was my first foray into computer animation. I had done hand-drawn animation this whole time up until that point. And we won a bunch of awards, including the Visual Effects Society's Award for Best Character Animation. So that was a really great opportunity, but it was kind of my stepping stool, step, <laughs> step ladder. I don't know why I'm on a stool. Uh, step ladder into starting my own company. Um, so I left Disney early from my contract, which was unheard of at that time, and joined with two guys from my church. And we formed Tenacious Family Entertainment, and which was our own faith-based animation company. Um, and it was, Phil Vischer does play into this story because Phil, Phil had already had a lot of success with the VeggieTales in the Christian market. And we thought, well, you know, I have this experience at Disney and storytelling. Maybe I can create, you know, new characters. And not that I wanted to compete with VeggieTales because they were already so big, but I thought there's certainly room in this marketplace for more faith-based content of high quality. And that was my thing is I really wanted to bring high quality as Christians. I feel like we are called to be excellent at what we do and that there should be no excuse for not, for not having the same standards that we had at Disney in the Christian market. So I wanted to bring that to the Christian market. We created tenacious love thy neighbor uh, was our first video. Um, we created these characters, Lenny and Sid, but unfortunately the Christian market was not ready for that at the time and it was only kind of a one-hit wonder uh, industry, and everybody supported VeggieTales, and there seemed to be no room for other shorts or other uh, series to really kind of hit, at least at that time. And um, so after seven years of a lot of struggle, we had to close the doors on Tunacious, and I've been independent since then. But what I learned from this experience of stepping away from the big dollars of, of Disney. And I'll get more to that, I guess, in a little bit. Um, because that's, that's a big part of my, my life change story. I think is that stepping out on faith and starting this company with my two partners, we were all in, I mean, our families were all in, I downsized, I sold everything, my house, my car, we downsized dramatically, put everything into the company. And after seven years, it shut down. And I think a lot of people would go, well, that wasn't a success. That was a failure. And by the world's terms, I guess you could say that in a lot of ways. Um, because we did do a lot of things. We hired a lot of people. We did create a lot of projects um, that, that saw the light of day. But you know, ultimately, um, it couldn't sustain itself in that marketplace at the time. And we had to kind of walk away with it going, what was it all about? And really what we learned was that the journey was so much more about not creating popular animation, but, but God really calling our families and ourselves to really know what it meant to follow him and trust in him. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought I was going to get a little bit clumped here, but I started sneezing and said, <coughs> God really showed me what it was to, in a very personal way, to put everything on the line for him. And that, that experience for myself, for those around us, for people at my church, for my family, for my wife, galvanized our relationship. We became stronger as a family through this trial of not having any money and having to sell everything just to try and survive. But... Um, there was also a lot of ego check going on. I, you know, I had just maybe five years before this done Mulan and, you know, was a feature director at Disney. And I, I said goodbye to all that for God, just to be able to go more into the faith-based market. But what I realized is that God wanted me to, yes, continue on this path of creating cartoons using the talents and abilities that he had given me. But that I didn't have to necessarily go into the faith-based market to have an effect on the world. So I have moved into 
the independent life, uh, independent producer, director um, in the animation industry. So not not mostly not at the bigger studios. And I became an executive producer on Mosley, which was a, a it has a faith based element to it. And it was produced in um, New Zealand, actually, at a studio called Hoo Hoo Studios and with China Film Animation in co-partnership. I've done a lot of things in China more recently, um, not only speaking engagements and things like that, but um, a lot of investment has come into my projects from Chinese partners and that sort of thing. Um, so Mosley was one of those projects. It, it's, it, it did well in New Zealand in that territory, that area, but it never really broke through into the US, so you might not have heard of it. But, um, oh, this is something I actually have it here because um, even though it just came out, this is something I worked on seven years ago, and it this was a huge journey making animal crackers. I was co-director with a good buddy of mine, Scott Saba, who was the producer on it, and it was just a small little renegade ragtag movie, kind of the little engine that could, that made it all the way to Netflix. And it just recently, it's on Netflix now, so you can go check out Animal Crackers. Um, it released around July 24th, and um, this was this is a whole talk in itself of how this film came about because it was just another example of God opening doors and opportunities, so much so that we had a tremendous cast on the film. This is some of the voices that we had playing some of the parts and the roles that they played. But John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, we had them uh, as co-stars working on our film and we did it, we produced, we recorded them six years ago. That was well before uh, A Quiet Place, before John even started um, really working on A Quiet Place, which starred them together, of course. And that was, that became their first movie out that they worked on. But really they worked on our film for the first time together. So we're kind of proud of that. We brought them together. No. <laughs> um, and, uh, but uh, it was a great opportunity to work with other past uh, um, actors that I worked with at Disney. Um, he's not on here, but Patrick Warburton, who did Kronk, and who I animated, he was, he did a voice in it. Danny DeVito is from Hercules, of course. Um, we had Wallace Shawn, who plays the dinosaur in the Pixar movies, Toy Story. Wallace Shawn was in it. Um, and um, Gilbert Gottfried, actually, who's not pictured here. Gilbert Gottfried, who was Yago, uh, who I also animated. He was in the movie. Uh, and then working with, you know, Sir Ian McKellen. You know, thou shalt not pass was also an awesome opportunity. Um, and he actually sings in the film. So I highly recommend you guys checking out that film. And the other part about it is that producing animation independently means lower budgets. Lower budgets means that you probably can't afford to do it in the United States. So we worked with Valencia, Spain and produced the movie largely there. We did a lot of the pre-production in California and Los Angeles. Um, right down the street from my home office. But we went overseas to Valencia, Spain to produce the, the heavier part of it. All the CG computer animation was done there. There's a little picture of me at the bottom with, the, with some of the crew. We actually expanded far bigger than that later on. Um, and that's really the virtual studio is uh, something that I'm uh, very involved with nowadays uh, on the independent side. But I still work on... Um, some bigger budget features with other studios uh, as they come up. I was a part of, I worked on 20 minutes of 2D animation for Mary Poppins Returns. If you guys saw that, I don't have a slide on it, but um, I worked on the 2D animation for Mary Poppins Returns. And as Tommy said, Space Jam, a new legacy. They don't like us calling it Space Jam 2, but that's, come on, that's what everybody's going to call it, right? Uh, but it's called Space Jam, a new legacy. And I'm doing, again, traditional animation, which means nowadays it's digital. If you could see my setup here, you'd see what that looks like. But I draw on a digital computer screen, but it's still hand-drawn animation one frame at a time. Um, but with the Looney Tunes characters, who I'd, it's just been a really blessing that got open the store because I always, as a kid, wanted to wanted to animate Bugs Bunny and and Daffy Duck and those characters. I had done Mickey Mouse over at Disney, and now to do Bugs Bunny, I feel like I've hidden. I've worked on the two biggest stars in the cartoon universe, so that's been kind of fun. 
Um, and uh, I don't have a slide for it either, but uh, God uh, continues to use me um, in, in different ways. I've always had a, a feeling and, and a desire to teach. And so I'm now the program director at Azusa Pacific University, which is a Christian um, private college here in California, Southern California, um, right over the hill from Hollywood, APU. Um, and I, they helped. What I really liked, too, is they brought me in and had me design the animation program. There's a four-year BA in animation and visual effects now because I helped start it. And, um, and I'm the lead professor. I teach three classes starting Monday, as a matter of fact. I have three classes uh, a week that I teach. Um, and then I have a bunch of adjuncts, too. But um, you can get a degree in computer animation or hand-drawn animation from Azusa Pacific University, which um, I'm so thankful because I, I had opportunities to teach before at CalArts, where I went to school and other places that are non-Christian schools. And I just really wanted to be able to speak about my journey and how God has moved in my life and to really create the next generation of influencers for Christ. Um, now I feel like I'm able to do that through APU. And I also speak into people's lives around the world through a podcast that I co-host with my brother, my twin brother, Tom. Yep. He stayed in animation too at Disney for many years. And he and I both do a podcast about animation um, but it's also a great voice for us to be able to talk about our faith and things like that, too. And um, it's available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, you name it, wherever you find your podcast, Anime from the Heart. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you guys for listening. I'm going to stop sharing. So I, uh, I, I went through that fairly briskly. Sometimes I uh, go a little slower and spend some more time on especially some of the emotional parts because the, the tenacious days were definitely um, a trial of faith for me, but it was also the thing that brought me in closer to and galvanized my relationship with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, to the point where I knew that I was placed on the planet drawing cartoons for a real purpose, and that was that was definitely, and why I say I, I've learned so much about the de the small details and God in those details is that doing Tenacious was the very first time that I really put my, my, my life, my family's life, my kids, just totally in the hands of God. And we were there, jumped off with no parachute off the cliff, as they say, and it was up to God to really kind of sustain us. And he did. So I went from, you know, a half a million dollar job a year, half a million dollars a year kind of job at Disney directing Mulan to not knowing how I was going to pay uh, the next rent, rent bill or even how I was going to pay for food to put on the table. And that was a very humbling, humbling time in my life where God really showed up in a very real way. When you're at that point is when you, I think you really see God in, a, in a, such a tangible way. And that's what my journey with Tunacious was. And that's fortified me for everything that I do now, more so than the successes. And I guess that's the important thing that I, that I like to emphasize even to my students at APU is that you learn more from the trials and the, the tough times in your life than you do in, from those huge successes, right? Um, and I kind of needed that. I needed to see that. So God, God definitely thunked me on the head during the tenacious days about what it was to think that I was in charge and it was all about me, large and in charge. And it really was not. It was about God and what he was doing. 